I told my wife that I wouldn't do startup again because of the emotional roller coaster. But here it is, it's a couple of years later, it's running it's something that's quite new for Vietnam as a country. How come when you come to hotel, you always need to lie up and do the check-in at the front end? So all these kind of new or modern customer experience is available everywhere, but not at the hotel. Why is that so many problems within the fixed properties that they wouldn't let people have such experiences? You have no incentive to use startup or new innovative solution because if it works, you didn't get any reward. If it doesn't work, then you get punished. And our opportunity is here is because we have been burned as the first customer. How does that work with other OTA? So every single revenue that you get from OTA to direct, that is a 30% of revenue that you set. And so it's right there, it's, it's on your current business, you don't even need to do anything. You just need to have the right tools. Where are you and how do you feel uh, the positioning between you and the bigger groups? We have proven to many customers that we are at the same level as the international consumer now, the owner now, they have more choice. And I think that's a, the, the best case for everyone. Welcome to Forbes CEO Talks. I am your host, Kung Dang. Today, I have the pleasure to interview Mr. Huang Eric Nguyen. Is the CEO of Vin HMS, a member company of Vin Group. Hello, how are you? Good to have you here. Hi, um, I'm good and uh, thank you for having me. So you, uh, a Vietnamese American, came back to Vietnam about five, six years ago. Background is an engineer, but you get into this space, which we will talk about it uh, more in detail later. Let's do a, a brief introduction about you. Mm. I am Vietnamese Vietnamese, not Vietnamese American. Okay. <laughs> uh, growing up as an engineer, I, I, uh, I got into university here in Ho Chi Minh City. And then I went to Houston to got my uh, master's degree of um, computer science, management information system in University of Houston. And I spent about 10 years in Houston um, working as software application developer for, for many Fortune 500 companies. But uh, you know, I always want to come back. I always want to, to do startup. So 2011 is when I, I, I start my company in Houston, but then I have an office in Vietnam, and then that's when I, I came back to Vietnam and uh, built that company. And later I exit the company, have another startup, raise the money from Coca-Cola to grow it in, in Southeast Asia. Uh, when it didn't work out, I took a break, and then I joined Amazon Web Service as the first employee of uh, AWS Vietnam, I think in 2017. And then so I, I, you know, I told my wife that I wouldn't do startup again because of the emotional roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, deep down, I, I think I know I'm still a builder. So that's why I think back um, end of 2018, when I got a chance to, to talk to the chairman of Vin Group, and he, he showed me the problem that Vinburn has, many problems, many systems that we talk to each other and things like that. And he asked me, if I come in, can I come and you know, fix that? I propose a, a different solution. I propose that I build a product company, that build a product that with Vinpearl become our first customer, mm. and then after that I get to sell it to our you know other company in Vietnam and in the region. And he was okay with that, and so that's mm. that's that's why I quit Amazon and I joy start this company. You said you told your wife that you don't want to be a, 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 in startup anymore, but here it is, it's a couple of years later, it's running something that's quite new for Vietnam as a, uh, as a country. Looking through your background, you, you said you're a builder. I, th I think you're more of like an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I mean, you started you, you various ventures and you, you joined AWS mm -hmm. as among the first, very first few employees in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So transitioning from there with the experience into, I guess, this is hospitality and management system. What is the grand vision of VIN as a, a conglomerate to get mm -hmm. into the space. But you, you had a conversation with Mr. Vung. How, why did they want to go into this space? I think it, it starts from their own problem because they have like, like Vinpearl, right? And it's a, a group of hospitality company. Um, back in 2018, they have 35 hotels, 20,000 people. And they got into all kinds of problems when they're trying to grow and trying to, do, to deliver better customer experience. And also I think at that point in time, Vin Group want to focus their attention into technology and industry. And so what they did is they act as an incubator. Mr. Vung met with many of the experts from global tech company, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and then they gave us a look inside Vinpearl or Vin Group 
and the problem, and we get to choose how and uh, when we're going to fix it. And so they act as an incubator. They gave us the capital, they gave us the first customer, and they let us do it our way as long as we deliver. And so that's, I think that's, that worked out pretty well for, for us. So the VIN HMS is your brainchild and wonderful support from, from uh, mm -hmm. the parent yeah. the group. Yep. What is it? What is HMS? What is the difference between that and, and a so-called property management system? Yes. To understand it, you need to understand the current status quo, which is, like, if you look at a four- and five-star hotel, at the core of it, there will be a thing called a PMS, which is property management system that manages all the room. And then you have a thing called a reservation system that basically sells the room to the channel, OTA. But in, in actual, to run the hotel, you need a lot more system, right? The system to manage the housekeeping, to manage the transportation pickup, to manage the um, inventory, how do we want to fix the AC and things like that. So in reality, um, to, to run a hotel like that, many hotels in Vietnam, even in this region, they, they only buy just one piece of the, the core PMS and then they use many external system, all right? So they, you basically connect them together. And so it, it works, okay? Now the, the vision of HMS or, or what we are trying to do is we're not trying to replace the old software with the new software. The traditional hospitality is always like that, okay? But the, the world have changed, okay? And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to become a platform that we allow them to do innovation so that they can generate more revenue not just by using the, the, the same old way. i give you an example. QR payment. Everywhere you go here in Vietnam, even Singapore, right, or Southeast Asia, you see QR payment everywhere, right? In the restaurant, in the coffee shop, right? So how come in hotel there's always cash or credit? Right? Another example would be like pre-check-in at Ally. Ally's been doing this for years, and their security requirement is very strict. But so how come when you come to hotel, you always need to lie up and do the check-in at the front desk? To all these kind of new or modern customer experience, it's available everywhere, but not at the hotel. Not because of, there's no technology. The technology is out there. It's just that the core property management, they are old. They're not open up. So they prevent hotel to do this kind of innovation. And the problem with that is once you have this innovation, it's not just about the customer experience. It can also reduce your cost. It can also increase your revenue. So there are many things that we can do. So in, in brief, right, we, we are not just another solution, I think. We're basically a completely different way for you to run your hotel and not from there grow. You, you touch on kind of different sides of that, as I can see. Let's say two parts of that. One is the, to serve a better customer experience, which is, you know, you brought up the point, the uh, advanced check-in mm -hmm. uh, for hotel, for flights. That's the part of a uh, customer experience. The other side is the operational problems within a, a business itself. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the, the business itself. Why is that so many problems within the fixed properties, the real estate, mm -hmm. the, the, the hotels, the resorts, that they wouldn't let people have such experiences? Mm -hmm. it, is, is the core problem is technology or the people or why is it? I think it's, um, it's the business itself. If you look at hospitality, for example, the original investment for hotel, right, it can be 10 or even hundreds of million dollars. Technology is just a very small part of it. And so if you run the IT technology of this company like that, you have no incentive to use startup or new innovative solution. Because if it works, you didn't get any reward. If it doesn't work, then you get punished. So after a while, people would basically just stick with the status quo. They just use the brand name, traditional, always, just to protect the, the job. And the, the, the entry bar is also very high because like if you, now you, you, you go to five-star hotel and say, hey, I have a much better way to manage the operation. They would ask you, have you done this before? And it's normally the, the answer is no. So, it's, so it's, it's really hard. And so as I say, it's the, the, the industry itself is always closed. And it's been like that for many years. But the good thing is COVID changed everything. I mean, they've been doing that for a while and they think they've been okay with that. But because of COVID now, you know, all the requirement change, the market change, you know, requirement from the customer. Now you care more about, you know, uh, cleaning, sanitization, um, vaccine, things like that. So hotel now realize that they need to change. And so that's, I think that's, that's our huge opportunity right there. 
Okay, so on the other side of that, the customer experience. So this platform, this, mm -hmm. the HMS, how does it help the experience from a customer perspective? Yes. So as I said, right, we try to bring the modern customer experience into a very traditional business, right? Uh, the modern experience now, you when you check down, right, you want to pay by QR, you want to pay by all the e-wallet that you're having on your, your account, right? When you check in, you're on the road from the airport to your hotel, you want to be able to do pre-check-in, you want to order food before you come. Mm. Okay, all these kind of experience that become standard on other industry, but you can't do it. Okay, so what we're trying to do is on this side is nothing new, but the, the fact is like we enable all that for the hotel. And we all know that once you do that, when the guests are happy, they tend to pay more. Right. Yes. Right. So this, this is something that currently VIN HMS is providing to properties across the Yes. Yes. When you enter, what was the ma market in this space? What, what was the potential that you see that you do that beside only solving the problem for VIN? Mm -hmm. So as I said, it's, it's a very traditional business. So when I came in and the market was, and I believe it still is, um, it was controlled by a few legacy international brand. If you're four or five star, you must use that solution. Right? Mm -hmm. You don't even get a choice. Okay? And of course, like for three star and below, you have many smaller uh, local software solutions. But uh, that's it, it's, you know, it's, it's very close and there's not a lot of innovation happen. If you see that, it's very, it's just only outside and it's basically irrelevant because the core are closed and controlled by, by this, you know, um, this guy. Yes. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a full hole into that. We bring all the innovation in. And our opportunity is here is because we have Vinpearl as the first customer that gave us credit. And then we proved to the world that he, he, we, we work at the highest level. Mm -hmm. And now we, we become another alternative solution for customer for five star hotel when they need to to you know to to look for operation system. So, with with Vin HMS, enter the market uh, in 2018, 2019 when you first launched. W where are you now in terms of market share? You know, can you just share a little bit about the the big picture of Vietnam? So in 2018, right before the the COVID. According to the, you know, the government data, uh, Vietnam has about 100,000 four and five star room. Mm. So with Vinpearl and Melia and many of these smaller customers, uh, we are managing around 18,000 to 20,000 room at the moment. So we're about 18% market share. You know, the, the number of room is going down a bit because of COVID, but we're growing back steadily. So uh, everybody believes that by next year, we will probably get back to the 2019 level. So from what I've seen, what we know in the market and like the, the, from a, a business travel perspective, right? I mean, there are more FDI uh, projects coming in, mm -hmm. there's more foreign travelers coming in, and the mid-range is, is growing, right? The yes. three-star hotels in major cities, uh, Haiphong, mm -hmm. Hanoi, mm -hmm. Ho Chi Minh City, uh, and major ports, um, that is a huge market. What is your thought about that market? What's the future if you were to tap into that? Uh, you're right. I mean, according to our data, right, um, right after COVID, the, the occupancy, which means the, the, the usage level of these city hotels are really good because, like, people travel close. And like you say now, now that travel has opened up, uh, these this are growing. So these hotels have different kind of needs because if you do, um, you travel, all you want is convenient. So our technology and our platform are actually really good fit for, for these hotels. When we talk to them, we figure out there's a lot of things that we, we can help them. But as I say, right, the beautiful of our platform is because it's cloud-based and it's many features, so we, we don't really need to change anything for, for this guy. We basically just like turn on a few features and this guy can, can just use that. But I believe you're right. I mean, they, they will be a, a big part of the, um, the market going forward. Yeah, because for business travelers, they wouldn't spend money on sending these people to four or five star hotels. Mm -hmm. resort. It does not make sense yeah. because you're not on a vacation. One, second, you in and out. You mm -hmm. just have a place to sleep, and then right. make maybe a business center with access to right. internet yes. printers and then conference call. Um, so this market is growing significantly. Mm -hmm. At Forbes, we start seeing 
influx of investment come into the space. Mm. And, and there are a lot of local players and, and foreign mm -hmm. uh, players that are trying to grow in that space. The other challenge we see is um, the mid-range is also blend with a lot of local investors and family-owned operated business. Do you think you will have challenges in terms of convincing them to switch to a, a business model like yours, is, I believe, is a SaaS model, mm -hmm. software as a service, where it's, it's a traditional completely buy out of the software deploy it to the whole uh, system? What, what do you think of it? If we just replace the software, it doesn't be tough because like, nobody wants to change anything now that they don't have a lot of cash. Yeah. But our value proposition is basically, you know, we are not just replacing the software. We basically give them a way to increase revenue. In the case of City Hotel, as we call it, uh, we provide many solutions that let them do tap into the source. For example, we can connect directly to the major OTA in the world, Booking.com, Traveloka, you know, Agoda. So the, 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 the foreign customer can just book and go straight. Okay? We also provide them the ability to do direct booking, which is once, especially, and it's very important in the case of, um, of corporate travel, once you know and you like the hotel, you normally don't go search around a second time. So yeah. you want to go straight to that hotel. So you would prefer that hotel to have a direct booking capability. So then you can just like go to that website, they kind of remember you, and then you can book right there. Now that technology or that capability, normally not available for small hotel. Mm. But using our system, we provide it as part of the functionality of our system. So we basically give them for free a capability that allow them to do direct booking, which they can make more money from, from the guests. So um, all in all, I think the best persuasion is show them the success story that we did for other customer and say, hey, this is how you're going to grow your business. And I believe that would, you know, the, um, they would look into it and they would think that, hey, this is something that we want to do because the more you delay, the more revenue you're going to lose. From an operator perspective, let's say, let's look into the reservation aspect for a second. How does that work with other OTA? Um, can you share more on that? In Vietnam and also in Southeast Asia, uh, OTA normally contribute to about 20 to, to, to 30 percent of your revenue of a hotel. Majority of the uh, revenue of hotel not actually coming from TA, mm. travel agent. Right. You know, if you have like guests from Korea or Japan, they go to TA because OTA is mostly for individual. Yeah. If you need to book five tickets for the whole family, you normally don't go to OTA. That's just a lot of click. You would call your travel agent and say, hey, I have five people or 10 people or 25 people, okay? So for OTA, we have our direct channel manager. So we have uh, basically a direct connection with the top five for OTA in the world. Booking.com, Traveloka, Agoda, and Ctrip. And so by connect directly to them, the booking will come from the OTA to our system in a very fast way, so no latency. So that's very important. If you have a lot of room, you need to, to control that. For travel agent, it's very important because travel agent, previously, the way they work for your hotel is they're going to call you. This guy don't have any system. They're going to call you, they email you, and then you need to basically balance the, the request from the TA versus the request from the OTA. Okay? So we have a very unique um, functionality in our system called a portal for travel agent. So that basically is a website. You set up, you give it to your travel agent and say, hey, it's all there. So the travel agent will have their own inventory. They have their own rate, their own package, everything in there. They can do it all by themselves. So instead of calling you in the middle of the night when they have a new customer, they now can just go into the website and book it. And you know, they see all the information there. So that's how we help um, hotels here in, in, in Vietnam by you know, giving them the portal for travel agent and also giving them better access to the, um, the OTA. I think it's more on, okay, so a property, just much like airlines, like you shared earlier, right? They have allocated seats and they sell to different agencies. Right. Hotels is the same. They have a property and they allocate certain rooms to a certain agency. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned that your system able to save significant cost mm. to a property owner instead mm. of you know, giving that revenue away to uh, OTA or trip, uh, typical travel agents. Could you share more about that? So as I said, OTA normally would contribute to about 20, 30% of the revenue of a hotel or resort. On an average, they would take 
thirty percent of the commission on the revenue they they bring to you. Okay, so every booking that go to you to OTA, they can get uh, commission about thirty percent on on that. Now, once you have a thing called a direct booking system, right? You can invite your guests because in the case of your guests arrive one time they like it, they can invite your guests to book to the direct booking system. Now, going to the direct booking system, you wouldn't have to pay to the OTA, okay? And then so would you save that thirty percent on commission? And uh, you, you, you want to use that thirty percent commission to do a promotion for your customer. So the I, the message would be, hey, go into our direct booking system. We give you a, let's say ten percent off on a normal price, or even 20% off on a normal price. So even when you do that, the customer get a 20% discount, but you also, it also costs you 20%, so you also save about 10% on top of that. Now remember that OTA is very strong, and they spend a lot of money doing uh, advertising. Or they, they bring Google. the customers. They bring the customers. Yeah. So you wouldn't want to think like you can get rid of them all. That is not possible. But the idea would be you can somehow gradually convert the piece of revenue coming from OTA toward the direct. Okay? So every single revenue that you get from OTA to direct, that is a 30% of revenue that you save. And so it's right there. It's, it's on your current business. You don't even need to do anything. You just need to have the right tools. So this is to, to capitalize based on the existing customers. Yes. So the ones already visited the hotel, mm -hmm. you build a loyalty program exactly. and you capitalize more on that. Yes. Uh, even better deal than they go into an OTA. Yes. Okay. Yes. So let's talk about VIN HMS and the, uh, the players out there. So VIN HMS itself is a five, four years old uh, brand uh, backed by the group, uh, quite respected. And then other players, we start seeing Vietnam is, is a fast rising economy. There are more and more projects coming up. Mm -hmm. um, where are you? How do you feel uh, the positioning between you and the bigger groups? Uh, ISG, they, they probably have their own homegrown, globally uh, deployed, uh, the other players, and they believe they also sell to others as well. Um, what do you think of that in the market of Vietnam and, and Southeast Asia for VIN HMS? I think it's, it's a huge pie, and there's a lot of space for us to grow into. So if you look at just Vietnam, for example, right, uh, you have the major chain, right, IHG, Accord, right, uh, Wyndham, Melia. So each of these uh, group have their own market. But the majority, many of the, 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 the market share for five stars are still owned by local own um, hotels. Okay? Yeah. And these guys, now, they, they want to improve their experience. They want to improve their level of quality assurance and everything. So before, the only way they can do it is upgrade their operating system to something that's similar to the one that you know, the international chain has been using. Now with our software, they do have a chance. They do have an alternative solution because we have proven to many customers that we are at the same level as the international, but of course we are a lot more affordable with a lot more like modern experience. So that Basically, we consumer now, the owner now, they have more choice. And I think that's a, the, the best case for everyone. Where do you think that, where do you see your business going in the next five years or even five to seven years? When we start this, uh, we look at the market and we see that whatever problems that Vinpearl was having, it's not just Vinpearl, not just Vietnam. Yeah. It's the same thing happening, you know, in Southeast Asia and in our country, in the world. They have more properties, they see more problems. Exactly, yeah. yes. So we, we, even from day one, we never look at ourselves as just a Vietnamese um, uh, provider. Uh, we always look at ourselves as that, at the minimum, regional company. And so I think in the next five years, we're going to grow outside Vietnam to, to provide to at least in, in market in, in Southeast Asia, especially in, in Thailand and Indonesia. And then, you know... I don't know. I mean, I've, I've had like, questions coming from the U.S., from the Caribbean, so we'll, we will see where that takes us. But I believe we have a lot of potential to grow. Mm. In, in your space, software as a service, SaaS model, uh, servicing the hospitality industry, beside what you do, what do you think in terms of innovation that needs to happen in the hospitality space uh, in Vietnam in the coming years? One of the things that we, we've seen and even heard is 
we have beautiful natural resources, right? Yeah. We have beautiful beaches, but we don't have enough uh, service to go with that. So, you know, people just come to Vietnam, like you heard that one time, two times, but they can go back to Bangkok or Thailand like seven times or eight times, okay? So at the high level, you know, um, you need to have more services together, which is the hospitality. And that's why you see a uh, group like Vinpearl, they have not just like Vinpearl, they have Vinwonder, the theme park and everything. So basically, it, it, it needs to be an ecosystem so that you can provide more value to the guests so they can come back. And to maintain that kind of experience, this is where we can come in because our technology becomes the backbone of all kind of experience, right? You stay at a hotel, you go to the theme park, you seamlessly know that you can enter the theme park. You know exactly you know, where you stay so that you can enjoy your day in the theme park. You can buy anything you want, but then already charge back to the room and things like that. So, so I think there's still a lot of things that we can do and we, we want to do. And the moment we do that, then I believe there's a lot of room for, for us as a company and also as a country to grow because the most important part is the natural resource is something that we are very good at. It's wonderful. Well, thank you for being here and sharing your successful story. And I wish that Vin HMS can represent Vietnam and go beyond the borders. Thank you very thank much you. for having me. Thank you. Thank you.